How's it going everyone? Welcome to yet another video and today we're going to talk about a brand that I'm very excited about which is Septième Laser and we're going to look at the Ernest Yacht Pro Boots in Green Patina. Coming up! If you know me, you know that I love patina work especially on shoes and one of the best countries that produces shoes with extraordinary patinas is France. There's Colincourt, there is Altan Boutier, there is Corté and of course there is Septième Largeur. It's a brand that has really excited me before and I hadn't even tried them so uh, the, the allure of trying them here and having my own pair was super exciting for me and I, I think you can see it in my face probably. Uh, I should also disclose that uh, Chetim Largeur sent me this pair uh, for this review, but my opinions will be my own and I will be as honest as possible. So, uh, this brand uh, originates from France and it actually has uh, quite a short history, just from 2009, I think. So it's a bit over 11 years, almost 12 now. Uh, this, however, does not mean that they don't have a pedigree when it comes to shoemaking. Uh, especially uh, the owner, uh, Matthew, and his uncle, uh, Marcos Fernandez, I hope I'm saying it right, uh, they have a, you know, a, a shoemaking history that goes back to the 70s, 80s. Especially his uncle was a very busy man and like, he founded, together with Matthew in the end, one famous French company called Markovsky. And eventually they ended up uh, here with Setion Largeur. And these shoes are standard Goodyear welted. They have some tricks up their sleeves that you will see in the close-up section. They're known for their excellent patina work and they're quite distinguishable. And some really nice features that I didn't expect. So I'm very excited to talk about them. And if you see that the color green is my favorite. So what we're going to do today, of course, is we're gonna go in deep and talk about the model, talk about the last, talk about the fit, talk about the quality, how they compare, how can you get them and all the stuff you should expect from this review. So let's jump right into it. All right, so let's talk about the box first. Uh, it's made from cardboard, it has a nice light gray color and of course it's branded on the top, uh, 7ème largeur. And here on the side, of course, you can see here all the details you might need for your shoe. I, I really like that they have this uh, tab here so you can just slide everything. Let's see what we got inside. Uh, we got two shoe bags. Let's put one inside and they're pretty big. They have this sort of maroon color. This is really nice. Uh, they're quite luxurious and a nice twill weave branded of course and they do have like a nice softer nap inside. It's pretty hard to show you, but uh, that ensures that your shoes will be protected. What else do you have here? So we have a nice leaflet here, both in English and French, uh, which is actually a very nice little touch. So many people ask me, you know, how do you take care of patina shoes? Or especially when they're buying shoes from me, like, well, how do I take care of them? And I always leave them a note, but this is also a really nice thing. So what it says pretty much is that, you know, always use a shoe horn, uh, let your shoes rest, uh, use the shoe trees, condition your shoes when needed, uh, and let them dry naturally, think like this. So it's very thoughtful of them. Now, another thing that surprised me was the shoe horn. The shoe horn is actually like a metallic silver, and it's, it's really a good quality. It's not your regular plastic shoe horn that you see from most brands, including my own. Uh, and it's also branded. Very nice little touch. This will last you pretty much forever. Uh, pretty much apart from your shoes, the box, this is the last part, which is sort of a nice little cloth, you know, that uh, you put inside and between your shoes so they don't, there's no friction and they don't grind it against each other. Uh, the packaging overall is great, but you're not here for that, right? So let's move on to the shoes. All right, <laughs> first of all, let's look at the color. It's like absolutely gorgeous. It's uh, what they call the V026 patina, and it's under their green patinas, as you can see. It really, if you, sh if you put light, like a lot of light, uh, it looks like 
how would you say it? emerald green i love it jade green uh, but on a more conservative everyday environment it will look more just regular dark forest green which is great for the versatility the the finish uh, is i mean is excellent you can see that these are hand painted uh, i will mention some details later there is some really nice burnishing on the toe it it fades nicely it's a bit more uh, prominent towards the toe but I actually really like this and well the the whole boot is covered like this and there's burnishing around the edges uh, there are so many colors to choose from I uh, this was one of my favorites though so. uh, let's talk about uh, the last so this is the 174 last it has it's very reminiscent uh, as of the Santos 401 it has a very nice almond shape uh, it's borderline soft square on the top let's show you from the bottom you can see here how well and how nice it's trimmed it's a very elegant last i think these types of last are pe perfect for chelsea boots for whole cats for plain toes in general because it gives it a nice elongated look uh, as a design this is a regular Yodpur riding boot and it has a nice single strap here uh, with a silver buckle here and what else should I show you first? Uh, let's talk about the, wa the waist and the actual sole, which is one of the interesting details here we'll, you will find. So what we got here, of course, is, is uh, Goodyear welted, and you have a closed channel leather sole. There are a few nice features that you can see here. Uh, first of all, the finish of the sole is like excellent. It might appear a little dirty here because uh, you know I tried them on the floor. Uh, but first of all, you have some nice brass tacks here on the front. And uh, I'm not sure how this would affect if I actually put some, uh, how do you say it, uh, metal toe tips. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but really what's interesting to me is how it's very smooth area around the heel here on the cup. And it's half rubber. Uh, you can see the tacks as well. But here on the waist, which is you know sufficiently beveled and has a little fiddleback, uh, you can see some markings here. It has nine each side, and those are what you call wood pegging. So they are like pegs, usually made of wood, sometimes out of brass, I think, and they they pretty much connect the sole and the upper leather. Just you know, peg them in. I've seen that before in Mafte Vienna. It's a more traditional classic method. It's very interesting that they chose to use it. Uh, talking about other details, so on the back, very interesting to me, is that you've got your usual back seam and you, you see here that there is a small detail that is quite, uh, you would say, unusual or different. No, it doesn't make any difference stylistically and most of you will not see, but it's still, you know, you can see how everything goes, and the stitching goes inside, inwards and here as well, and it creates sort of like a like an X, a sharp X or a sharp uh, H, you would say, with jagged edges. Very nice, uh, which also brings me the, to the stitching, which is, wow, look at the color. Stitching is excellent. Uh, as you would expect around this price point, it's very consistent, and it's mostly single stitches, uh, apart from some areas like here, where you can see it's double. I do think that the, the heel is slightly shorter than average. As I'm just, you know, feeling the boots, I also see another small detail that is pretty hard to show here. But as I run my finger across here, uh, it's not it's not exactly even. It feels like the inside, the mid part of the of the outsole, is sort of like sanded in a bit more. So it has a little bit of like nice texture to it and that's in the front of the shoe uh, when it comes to the density and the stitching density I mean it's it's pretty good and I mean high enough SPI uh, what I can tell you that might have been a little more sloppier is here around the front that the stitching is more outwards and you would see it like you know closer to the uppers not that it makes any structural difference uh, so overall, they are also quite uh, quite light, lightweight. Uh, there are some points that I would like to make about uh, first uh, the leather and the shaft and also the finishing itself. So first of all, you might see, of course I've worn a couple of times already, that 
you know, in, in boots, boots like Chelsea boots and Jodhpur's, you will always see some sort of creasing, you know, on the top of the shaft of this area. This is completely normal whether you're buying sand crispins or you're buying Mermin. This is how shoes are made, boots are made, and how they are lasted and how they're aligned and all this kind of stuff. So don't be alarmed or think that this is an inferior product because it has some creasing on the top. It's not worn. And the second part I want to mention is the finishing on some few areas. Let me show you. Like, like here. Under the strap, which is not visible by any means, it's not visible, uh, you will see that it's, there, you know, there's a lot of paint here and there. And yes, I guess that the finishing could be better, but first of all, you don't see it. It has no effect on the structural integrity of the shoe. And to me, this is a reminder that it was painted by hand, not by, you know, some kind of machine or, or applied before. And that you might also see across the lining here sometimes, like there is some form of, let's see if I can show you there, like uh, some form of smudging. Uh, inside the insole, of course, uh, half insole branded, uh, good lining, it's quite smooth. And uh, I, I felt when I was using them that um, my foot had sufficient uh, support and a decent arch, uh, also good instep. Overall, this is all the details I could find from the, the shoes themselves. Uh, they're pretty easy to put on as well. Pretty much across the board consistency, same thing on the other one as well, a bit of smudging inside and under the strap. But overall, I mean, this is great for, for, for the price point. So there we go. We have a really excellent boot. This is my first Jodhpur boots, riding boots. And honestly, it is a bit like wearing Chelsea boots, you know, over a whole cut up the front. Uh, the color might not be as versatile as you would expect, but I, I've got pretty much every color covered. So I wanted to see what they can do with their patina work. And this is one of the founders favorites and also mine, so why not? And I absolutely love it and I will wear it a lot. So as you saw in the close-up, this is a very solid boot. Uh, the construction is excellent. Uh, let's, the patina is perfect. Uh, the way it fades and the burnishing on the front is really nice. There are some great features like, you know, the closed channel sole and very unique with the wood pegging. And overall, it is quite lightweight and easy to put on generally i mean it's it, what can i say it's really good and you'd be like you know well, of course you got a pair for free like why would you not say good things about it and this is as i write in my written review which is in the description um it's partly true why because you know if you know me i also operate the noble shoe and what do i sell there Carlos Santos Patinas, which is a direct competitor to this. Yet here I am, and I talk to you about this with the excitement of like a 12 year old. And I can tell you that this is good. For the price you pay, this is excellent. And yes, I would buy it personally. Uh, when it comes to general level of the quality and what you should expect, it has a bit the, what would we say, the finesse that comes with a bit more southern European shoes, but also a little bit of the sloppiness that you would see a bit like uh, in the Italians uh, with, you know, the hand painting. Uh, but the price is very good. The presentation is great. The build quality is, well, so far looks great. And only time will tell. And overall, as I said, I can I very much recommend these or at least, you know, giving them, a, giving them a try, especially if you're in France or Singapore, Taiwan, and I think, uh, which one is the other one? It's uh, Switzerland. Those are their stores right now. So go in and don't hesitate. They have really friendly people. Now, uh, the price for these uh, would be about 400 US dollars um, without any VAT, unless you're in Europe, uh, which is great. And, uh, I mean, you can buy them either in the stores or online. 
so there's no other you know way you can get these at the moment uh, when it comes to sizing so as i said this is on the 174 last which is it reminds me a lot on the shape of uh, carlos santos 401 so if you're one of the people that like those almond shapes or like borderline uh, soft square toes uh, this could be very nice for you it does seem a little bit elongated so be wary of that like if you don't like an elongated look maybe this is not the last for you or the the, the shoe for you because this is also a plain toe and it accentuates the, the front now um, I generally if you watch the channel you know that I am between seven and a half and eight uh, in the septième largeur uh, website you will see that these this last, uh, the 174, is classified as thin. In my opinion, their thin is pretty much what you call a standard, standard width, or you would say D width in the US. And they also have a, a wider one. Uh, there is a nice list that uh, I can maybe leave in the description down below. Uh, regardless, uh, I was not sure what I would expect, but since it's a thin last and I'm like, probably it's a regular and my foot is a little wider, uh, on the forefoot, I chose a UK 8. Uh, which is what I wear in most of my shoes right now, uh, barring Carlos Santos, uh, which is Crockton Jones, uh, 348, uh, Carmina Rain, uh, TLB Mallorca Artista 107, uh, the Picasso Last, uh, Merman Hero, uh, things like that. My advice is take your regular true to size UK, uh, if you have regular feet, and, uh, or your regular USD and size down one full size. Uh, don't size down, your feet will be way too constricted, I would say. And, and so when I wear these, uh, what I feel is they're just right on the instep, it's perfect. Uh, there is enough toe space, but not too much on the front for me, for my foot. I would say about one and a half, two centimeters maybe. Uh, the ankle area is perfect. It's, it's often a problem in shoes like these. Uh, you know, when you have it all here on the shaft, because some people want them to be like really tight around the ankles, but I have bigger ankles, so that's a problem for me. Regardless, this fits perfect, and there is just uh, one finger, I would say, that I can put on the front, so there's just enough movement for my ankle, which is perfect. Uh, if there is anything that uh, a little bothers me, it's sometimes in these last that in right here around my little toe area, it, it feels a little, it, it is pinched, but this will, you know, will be eventually better with time. Uh, so now you know the price, you know the availability, you know the sizing advice, and you know pretty much that I, I can tell you that this is a great shoe and I'm very happy with it. Priced very competitively. Uh, when it comes to quality, I put it right up there with Carlos Santos hand grade, uh, with, uh, with Carmina, honestly. Carmina might have a little better finishing in a way, but I mean, the selling point of these is also the patina work uh, and around the TLB Mallorca. So if you're looking for something in the $400 area or a bit less, if you're going for the standard models around the 300 mark, uh, this is a great brand that I can recommend. And if you reach out to them anywhere on Instagram or uh, by email uh, or go to the store, I mean, they, they, they seem very, very friendly, very helpful. So that was it for my Septim Largeur Ernest uh, Yodbo review. I hope you really liked it. I, I mean, I look forward to wearing them. We have snow right now, so it's not entirely possible, but I'll see what I can conjure. Uh, certainly going to wear them as much as possible. Uh, but, so if you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the reviews, and if you enjoy the brand new intro and outro, uh, please let me know in the comments down below what you think. Uh, leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. There's much more coming and hopefully some uh, suits and sweaters and knitwear and high-end fashion as well. But before you go, you know what's coming. Stay for 30 seconds more. During a funeral, a man walks up to a widow and says, can I please say a word? And the widow says, of course. So the man steps up to the podium and he says, plethora. And the widow says, thanks. That means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. This, this is from my friend Mehdi from Canada, and uh, I thank him very much for your for his contribution. Uh, of course, you have a really bad dad joke that you would like to share. 
please do in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.